Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 50 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of how to use MIDI effects plugins in Logic and also how to record MIDI effects to tracks, which was a new feature added in Logic 10.7.5. And then over the next several videos, I'll give you in-depth tutorials on each of the MIDI effects plugins in Logic starting with the arpeggiator in part 51. So stay tuned for that. I've also made this project available as a free download if you wanna follow along with this video. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a music maker, a producer, or a mixing engineer, and you're sick of digging through emails for production notes and feedback, you've gotta check out boombox.io. Boombox allows you to upload full mixes, stems, or multi-tracks invite bandmates, collaborators, or clients to the project where they can leave time-stamped feedback on the tracks. And if you're working with clients and you wanna keep them from downloading the tracks until they've paid their bill, you can do that too. If you wanna check it out for yourself, head over to boombox.io and sign up for a free account today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so to get started, you need a software instrument on a software instrument track. And one thing I wanna point out here is on all software instrument tracks, you're gonna find this MIDI effects insert. Now you're not gonna find this on aux tracks, you're not gonna find this on track stacks, you're not gonna find this on audio tracks, and you're also not gonna find it on drum machine designer tracks because technically speaking, drum machine designer is a track stack, not an instrument. But you'll see this MIDI effects insert on any software instrument track. So in order to understand how MIDI effects plugins work, you kind of have to understand how the MIDI signal flow works in Logic. The MIDI data coming from regions in your project goes into the track. And despite the fact that there's an EQ first, the first thing that the MIDI data hits is actually the MIDI effects plugins, which can be loaded up here. So if I load up the arpeggiator here, the MIDI data from this track, these chords, are gonna hit the arpeggiator first, and then the MIDI data is going to be transformed by the arpeggiator, then that transformed MIDI signal is gonna go into the instrument on that track, which in this case, it's RetroSynth. RetroSynth, or whatever instrument you're using, is gonna input the MIDI signal and output an audio signal, and then that audio signal will hit any of the audio effects plugins on the track, like reverb, delay, etc. So with MIDI effects, these transform the MIDI signal before the MIDI data hits the instrument. So one of the really cool things you can do here is you can take something like basic chords and use an arpeggiator to transform the chords into something more interesting. So here's what the chords sound like just on their own. And if I load up the arpeggiator on that track, I can select an arpeggiator preset. I'm gonna go with this one called Groovy Cycle 1. Now I'm getting more of like a melodic idea. Now some of those notes are a bit softer than others. Here in the grid view, you'll see that certain notes have been pulled down. And while you can make adjustments here in the grid, you can also go to options here and you can pull down the velocity sensitivity or fix the velocity sensitivity by pulling this all the way over to the left. And then you can pull up or down the velocity to set all of the notes in the arpeggiator to the same velocity. Now, one other thing I wanna point out here with the arpeggiator is that when I use arpeggiators, I tend to make sure that each of the chords in my chord progression have the same number of notes. So if I have four notes per chord like I have here, I wanna make sure that every single chord has four notes. If you have some chords with more notes and some chords with less notes, this can sort of offset the rhythm of the arpeggiator. Now that may be what you want and it may work in some situations, but in most situations, I try to make sure that the chords all have the same number of notes. So that's the arpeggiator. Again, I'm gonna do a deep dive on this plugin in the next video. So let's move on to another MIDI effect. Here I have an electric piano and this electric piano is just playing one note at a time. It's basically playing the root note of the chord progression from before.
So another one of my favorite MIDI effects plugins in Logic is the Chord Trigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the Chord Trigger up on this. And what the Chord Trigger does is it can transform an input note to create an entire chord. So it can take one note and transform it into an entire chord. Now the factory default setting will actually use the same chord type for each note. So I think those were minor seventh chords. Yeah, A, C, E, G. So those are all minor seventh chords. In order to make the chords sort of work diatonically within the key of your song, you can either create your own chord preset down here, which I'll demonstrate in another video, or you can choose a preset up here. I'm gonna go to multi, and I'm gonna choose keyboard voicings, and I'm gonna choose diatonic right hand voicings. So this will give you a series of trigger keys, and this will transform each note into a chord. Let's see what that sounds like with the beat in and with the synth arpeggiator in. Now, another thing you can do in Logic is you can stack multiple MIDI effects plugins in a MIDI effects chain. So just like with audio effects chains, each effect in succession will affect the output of the previous effect. So maybe I want to repeat each of these chords in a rhythmic way, or maybe even transpose the repeated chords. Now, one way to do this is just to go into the region and change up the rhythm and add some new notes. But an even easier way to do this is to add the note repeater MIDI effects plugin. So you can actually add additional MIDI effects plugins before or after any MIDI effects plugin that's on the track. So you can just click below or you can actually click above. You'll see this little white line shows up and you click and you choose a different MIDI effect. So I'm going to add the note repeater after the chord trigger. So here's the note repeater. So what's going to happen here is the track is inputting a single note. It's transforming that single note into a chord. And then each of those chords are going to be repeated using the note repeater. Now I could use a preset up here. Let's try this octave shifter. That sounds pretty good, but I think I want something that sort of shifts downward instead of upward. So I'm gonna go back to the factory default. I'm gonna set the repeat to one. I'm gonna transpose this down a full octave, which is 12 semitones. And I'm gonna set the rhythm to a dotted quarter note. And again, remember what we started with was just a single note playing the root notes of each chord. So using MIDI effects plugins is not just a technical thing, it's also a very creative thing and allows you to get ideas out quicker without having to play in each and every single note. Next up, let's check out this bass here. Now right now this is just playing long notes. Maybe I wanted to create sort of like an arpeggiated bass line that jumps up and down in octaves. So I'll add the arpeggiator to this. And what I'm going to do is just use the stock setting here, but I'm going to set the octave range to two and the variation to three. Now, instead of just recording these long tones down here, maybe I want to actually record the motion that's being created by the arpeggiator. 
because I might want to go back into the recording and change some of the notes. So in Logic 10.7.5, they added a new feature where you can actually record the MIDI effects to your track. What you do is you click on the right side of any of the MIDI effects plugins here, and you select record MIDI to track here. And this will add this extra little orange arrow, which is showing you where the MIDI data is being recorded over to the track. The only caveat to this is you cannot do this with existing MIDI on the track. You actually have to play in the MIDI in real time with your MIDI controller. This is as of the most current version available at the time of making this video, which is 10.7.7. So maybe in a future version, they'll add a feature where you can record MIDI effects from previously recorded regions. But for now, you have to play it in in real time. So what I'm going to do is just delete these regions. I'm just going to hit R to record, and I'm going to play in that whole note bass line, and it's going to transform this into a repeating arpeggiated pattern in real time. Okay, so what you'll see there is it's automatically transformed my input with the arpeggiator and recorded the pattern from the arpeggiator. Now I do have a couple of wrong notes here I wanna take care of. This one right here needs to come down. This one needs to come up. And then this last note can go. And then I'm just going to conform all of these MIDI notes to the same velocity by holding Option with the velocity slider. But now I'm good to go. Now, you can actually leave the arpeggiator here if you want to or just bypass it. Um, you can also just get rid of it because we no longer really need it anymore because we already have the motion of the arpeggiator recorded as a new MIDI region. But again, what this does is it allows you to take that arpeggiator and then maybe do something else with it. Maybe I want to transpose a couple of these notes up and maybe do something a little bit different with them. Maybe I'll do something like this. Now, one last thing I wanna show you is that you can actually use track stacks as a way to layer up multiple MIDI instruments and you can actually change up the MIDI effects on each instrument inside of the track stack. So to demonstrate, what I'm gonna do is just delete the MIDI information off of my chord track. I'm also gonna get rid of the chord trigger plugin. And then what I'm gonna do is add one more layer. So I'm gonna double click, create a new software instrument, and I'm gonna create like a synth pad type instrument. So this is just a preset in Retro Synth called Access Codes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of these tracks, the arpeggiator, the what used to be the chord trigger, which is now just the note repeater, and I'm going to take these tracks and I'm going to load them inside of a summing stack. So I'll just select all three of these, go up to track, create new track stack, create a summing stack. And then what you can do is you essentially have like a synth group here, and you can put the MIDI data on the track stack. So the MIDI data that's on this track stack is gonna be sent to all three of these instruments. But again, notice that I'm using an arpeggiator on one of them, I'm using a note repeater on another, and just a synth pad on the other. So two of these tracks are going to be affecting the MIDI data in a different way, and one of them is just gonna be playing it as a pad. Or maybe I want one of these instruments to be up an octave. There's another MIDI effect in here called the transposer. And this one's really simple. You can just use this to transpose up or down in semitones. So maybe I want to bring this whole synth pad up by 12 semitones without having to mess with the MIDI in here 
or have to worry about any other settings on the track or in the synthesizer. So that's an overview of MIDI effects plugins and how to record MIDI effects to tracks in Logic Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.